Thank you, Darian. Thank you. Oh, before we get into the word, I'm going to ask Skyla to come forward. Don't worry, I got my, my last shot today. <laughs> I'm fully vaccinated now. Yay. Praise God. You might want to get it. Uh, so, Skyla, I'm so proud of you. I, she got baptized on Easter. And I was thinking about it. We've been a church for two and a half years. Going on three. This summer will be three years we've been a church family. And you're like the 30th person that have been baptized in oh, two wow. and a half years. That's awesome. So I'm going to keep it real with you. Half of the people I baptize are no longer serving Jesus. I'm going to, let's pray for Skyla. It's easy to get wet. It's harder to follow Jesus. It's harder to become a disciple. And I, I, I believe you call, you're called into leadership. Uh, I was talking to Max. I was like, you know what? When the time is right, I'm going to ask Skyla to be one of our core team leaders. Because you're a leader. You, you, I see leadership all over you. And so let's pray for her that, uh, that she'll continue to uh, walk with God when she becomes 18, when she's 20, 30, 40, 50, for the rest of her life. Because I've seen so many young people, they get baptized, and then a year later, they're no longer serving Jesus. And I believe you're going to continue to serve Jesus for the rest of your life. Amen. Let's pray for Skyla. If you could lift your hands towards the altar, towards Skyla, and just whisper a prayer. Sherry, you want to pray for Skyla? Father God, I just uh, thank you so much for Skyla and just her taking that step of faith, Lord, to serve you wholeheartedly, Lord. And, and God, I know that there will be challenges and obstacles that may come her way, but help her, Lord, just to remember you're there by her side, just to continue to fight and live for you, Lord, with all of her heart. And God, just continue to give her direction and show her what your will is for her life. And I just thank you for this precious child of yours, Lord, and thank you for bringing her to Hope City Church. and. I'm excited to see what you're going to do through her. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God bless you. Uh, I got some exciting news. I was going to share this later in my message, but like, I'm going to just share it now. We're going to Israel next year. Let me say it again. We're going to Israel next year. God put on my heart to take our church to Israel on a mission trip. So my vision is this. We're going to five year, five, five years, no, five days of mission work. And five days of tourism. So we're, we're gonna we're gonna be doing a vacation Bible school out there. So if you're interested, we're gonna be sharing Jesus with Jewish kids and Muslim kids out there. And we pray we we don't get killed for it. <laughs> we pray we come back alive. Uh, actually, we'll be fine. And then we're gonna do five days of tourism. We're gonna visit the, the Garden Tomb where Jesus came back to life. We're gonna see Golgotha. We're all gonna get baptized together at the Jordan River. So if you're interested in going to Israel next year, start saving. Uh, it's going to be some money between $2,000 and $3,000 to go on this trip. It's going to be well worth it. But hear me when I say, if you have a little bit of faith, don't let money be the issue. I've been on some mission trips that cost over $2,000. And I just had a little bit of faith. And God always provided the money for me to go. And so uh, it's on my heart as your guys' pastor to take you on mission trips because I know mission trips are life-changing I've been on seven already and so every year or every other year we're gonna go on a mission trip and so think about it pray about it if you want to go to Israel love for you to join us with that said go to Matthew uh, Revelations chapter 5 verse 1 the title of my message is the lamb and the seven seals you're going to have to get your Bible's apps open, or if you have an old-fashioned Bible like me, open it, because the Bible verses are not going to be on the screen. But I like, I think it's good for you to interact with the Bible yourself. Let God speak to you through the Bible. He always does. And here's the great thing. We read in Revelation chapter 1, verse 3, there's blessings. This is the only book in the Bible that says that you will be blessed when you read this book when it's proclaimed out loud, and when you hear it. Only book in the Bible that says you're going to be blessed. So I'm promising you one thing this afternoon. You're going to be blessed when you hear the word of God. So we read in Revelation chapter 5, verse 1. And I saw 
What, what did you? What did John see? And I saw on the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll written inside and on the back, sealed with seven seals. Then I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open up the scroll and to loose its seals? And no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open up the scroll or to look at it. So I wept much because no one was found worthy to open and read the scroll or to look at it. But one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed. He has overcome to open up the scroll and to loose the seven seals. And I looked, and behold, in the midst of the throne and of the four living creatures, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb as though it was slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into the earth. Then he came and took the scroll out of my right, out of the right hand of him who sits on the throne. Verse 8. Now when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb, each having a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song, saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and open its seals. For you were slain and have redeemed us to God by the blood. Out of the tribe of and every tongue, and people of all nations and have made us kings and priests to our God and we shall reign on the earth We're singing this song saying with a loud voice worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessings and every creature which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth such as in the sea and all that is in them, I heard saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. Then the four living creatures said, Amen. And the twenty-four elders fell down and worshipped him who lives forever and ever. The word of God. Thank you, God, for your word. Help me to proclaim it this morning. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you, God, for your love. Amen. Amen. Here's my first point. The seals represent God's righteous judgment. You know, I like doing demonstrations. And so, picture this in heaven. There are seven seals. So back in the day, they used scrolls to write. But upon this scroll is an interesting scroll because... It was written inside and outside the scroll. And each of the scrolls had seals, or the scroll had seven seals. Six judgments. But thank God for his mercy. <laughs> thank God for his mercy. See, God always provides mercy, right? God is a God of justice, and he's also a God of mercy. So right here, God is saying, enough is enough. It is judgment day. One day, Jesus is going to say, enough is enough. It's time to judge the world for her sins, for his sins. Because we have all sinned and fall short of the glory of God, whether we admit it or not. And we need God's mercy. I want that seventh seal, that seventh seal to be opened up for me, not those other seals. Because those other seals represent God's righteous judgment that's coming soon. Uh, I don't know if you guys have been following the news, but uh, Derek Chauvin, Chauvin um, you hear about Derek Chauvin? He got convicted of murder. It's so sad what took place. Like, it, we all saw what happened where that police officer was shoving his knee on his throat. For nine whole minutes. Talk about using deadly force. And finally, uh, nine jur jurors 
found him guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. But if you notice, it was the judge that had to proclaim the verdict. Not anybody could just proclaim the, the verdict. It's the judge that does that. And do you know how you become a judge? You got to get your bachelor's degree. Then after that, you got to get your law degree. Then after that, you got to get past the bar. Then you got to serve as a, a lawyer for a number of years and have a good reputation as a lawyer. And then you got to know a, a politician to get appointed to be a judge or get voted in to be a judge. You got to earn your stripes to be a judge. And see, Jesus earned his stripes to become a judge. He is worthy to proclaim judgment. His judgments are righteous. Nobody's going to hell because they don't belong there. He's a righteous judge. He's going to judge the world fairly. And his judgments are coming soon. We just read that his... And we're going to go into the, the six judgments later. But he is a righteous judge. We read in Revelation 5-7... Then he came and took the scroll out of God's hand, who sits on the throne. We read in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Whew! So that means we need God's mercy. We need God's grace. I heard this story years ago. So there's a lady, she got in trouble, and she broke the law, and so she needs to go to court. Thankfully, she knows a good lawyer, but she procrastinated for way too long, and she failed to call the good lawyer to defend her. She, she just, in her mind, she was like, uh, I'm going to be okay, you know, it's not that bad. I'll just go to the court myself, and, and I'll just t testify, and hopefully the judge, you know, I'll win the judge's favor. That Maybe the judge will believe me. And so she procrastinated for way too long. She never called her lawyer a friend. And then finally, it's the day that she needs to go to court. And now she's like kind of sweaty. She's like, maybe I should call my judge. Maybe I should call my, uh, I'm sorry, maybe I should call the lawyer friend I know. And so she, she's walking into the, uh, the courtroom and she sees her friend. And she's like, hey, I need you to defend me after all. I, I know uh, I should have called you and I know you, you're a great ju uh, lawyer and you, you can help me with this. You know, I, I you know, I'm in trouble with the law. Could you help me? And the, the lawyer friend says, I'm sorry, I can't help you after all. I wish you would have called me sooner because today I was appointed to be your judge. So is the case with Christ. We can like ask him to plead to the Father, forgive, forgive so-and-so because, you know, Jesus is willing to forgive us of our sins right now as the day of salvation. But we can't wait till judgment day. To, to ask Jesus, oh, Jesus, could you forgive me now? It, it'll be too late. We need his forgiveness now, not tomorrow. Because one day he's going to be appointed to be the righteous judge of the world. See, we read, Jesus Christ crucified is a revelation. Revelations 5.5 5. One of the elders said to me, Stop weeping. Behold the lion that is from the tribe of Judah, the root of David. He has overcome. And I saw between the throne and with the four living creatures a lamb standing as if slaughtered. Question, who is the lamb of God? Who is the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world? Jesus is the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. This is what John proclaimed. The next day, John saw Jesus coming towards him and he said, Look! The Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. See, back in the Old Testament days, they used to kill animals. Sorry, uh, you animal lovers. This is what they used to do. They would kill an unblemished lamb. And that was their way of getting atonement or forgiveness for their sins. And God required it that you must kill an unblemished lamb. And now, in the, the final days, in the last days, Jesus became the Lamb of God to take away the sins of the world. So, John's getting a vision and seeing next to God on his holy throne is Jesus 
who is appearing as a lamb of God, an unblemished lamb. Now you see this, the, the cuts all over him. He went through a tremendous amount of pain for you and for me. See, on the cross you see Jesus Christ and he says, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. And now in heaven, you see forgiveness too. Jesus is presenting himself as the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Thank God for Jesus. Because of Jesus Christ, we don't have to be afraid of Judgment Day. Because of Jesus Christ, we get to have eternal life. Amen? Not eternal damnation. God is good. We read in Hebrews 9.22. In fact, the law requires that nearly everything be cleansed with blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. See, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. But who shed his blood for you? Who shed his blood for you? Jesus. Jesus. Romans 8, 1 says this, Therefore there is no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. So the honest question I must ask, are you in Christ Jesus? Because if you're in Christ Jesus, you don't have to worry about dying. Because you're going to be with Him forever, and there's forgiveness. So when God looks at you, He sees the spiritual blood of Jesus all over you, which means you are forgiven. Amen? Revelation 20.12 says this, I saw the dead, both great and small, standing before God's throne. And the, book, the books were open, including the book of life. And the dead were judged according to what they had done, as recorded in the books. See, this has to do with those that are outside Christ. If you're in Christ, don't worry about this passage. Because the previous passage talks about we're reigning with Christ for a thousand years. So there's no way God's going to let you reign with Christ for a thousand years and then like, alright, now you got to get judged. No, this has to do with those that are outside Christ. One day they're going to have to be judged for what they've done with their lives. So we all need the Lamb of God. We, we all need God's forgiveness. Amen? Amen? But here's the thing. A lot of us want God's forgiveness, don't we? But we're not willing to give it. Let me say it again. A lot of us here, we, we want God's forgiveness. But we don't want to give it to others. It's easy to re receive God's forgiveness, but it's so hard sometimes to give it. Even for me. I'm a pastor, and sometimes I struggle with forgiveness. Sometimes i got to ask God, help me to forgive so-and-so. Sometimes I need to forgive so-and-so not once, twice, but a hundred times. When that person comes to mind, i got to say, okay, God, help me forgive that person again. See, Jesus says this in Matthew 6, 14. For if you forgive men of their tras trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men of their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. See, here's the honest question I have for you. What man, what woman, do you need to forgive? That's a scary verse. If you don't forgive people, God's saying, I'm not going to forgive you. So what man has hurt you? What woman has hurt you? Maybe it happened this past week, someone offended you. Who do you need to forgive? Did you know the word trespass means to offend? It means to slip or to sin. So I've noticed that with sin, sometimes it's deliberate, and sometimes it's accidental. It's a slip of the tongue. We need, we need, to forg we need God's forgiveness, because sometimes we, we all, we've all slipped, right? Sometimes we, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. My bad, forgive me. But there's been times, if we were to be honest, we did something we knew in our heart was wrong, and we still did it anyways. That's a deliberate sin. And there's also the sin of omission. When God says, okay, you need to do this, and you're like, you fight the call. Like, no, nah, I'm not doing that. When the Holy Spirit's moving in your heart, maybe God's saying, go to Israel. And you're like, no, nah, that's too far, but fly it. 
It's too much money. That's a sin. If God's saying, I want you to go to Israel, it's going to help your faith. And you're like, nah, I'm not going there. See, sometimes God's going to call you to do things in life. God called us to plant this church, the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. I could have said, no, I'm not doing that. I'll just serve as a youth pastor for the rest of my life. But I listened to the voice of God. And thank God I listened to his voice because Kyla got baptized during Easter. Praise God. God's good. You are a soldier for Christ. So what does the cross and the throne have in common? The cross represents forgiveness. And the throne of God represents forgiveness. Because we see a vision that right in front of the throne of, of God is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. See, God is a, a God of mercy, but He also has the authority to judge. So I, I'm asking God not to judge me, but to show me His mercy instead. How about you? Here's my last point. The Lamb of God is worthy of song and praise. Let me say that one more time. The Lamb of God is worthy of song and praise. And this is what we're going to be singing sometime in the future. In the near future, all of us are going to be singing this together. Black, white, Filipino. It doesn't matter your nationality. The Bible says here that every nation is going to be worshiping Jesus Christ. It's going to be a beautiful Sight. That's why it's our vision at our church to be a multi-generational church, a multi-ethnic church. Because we want all people groups to worship God here at Hope City Church. So we read in Revelation 5, 9, and they sang a new song saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open the seal, for you were slain and have redeemed us. By your holy blood. By God's blood. The blood of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation. And have made us kings or queens and priests to our God. You see yourself as a queen? You see yourself as a king? God sees you that way. You're part of his kingdom. And we, and we have a duty to, to minister to God, you know, through worship. And we also minister to each other by how we treat each other, by loving one another, like keeping that great commandment to love God and to love yourself as you love your neighbor. And, and the last verse says here, and we shall reign on, on the earth. We're going to be reigning with Jesus someday. See, Every Sunday, we have, every Sunday we have an opportunity to sing a new song. Seriously. Because we have different people that show up every week. So in God's, God's hearing it from heaven, it's like a new song. Especially when we all participate together, it's a new song. And just think about it. Every Sunday, across the globe, churches are coming together. And God is hearing a new song. He's hearing millions of people sing to Him. People from different backgrounds singing to the Lamb of God, to God the Father. So don't miss, on the, miss out on the opportunity to worship God every Sunday. We're, we're going to close in worship. If I could get uh, William and the worship team back here. We're going we're gonna to close in worship. Uh, yes, sir?
All right, I'm gonna, we're going to pray with you after the service, and we'll talk. So I want to read uh, some final scriptures, and then we're going to close. I'm not sure where William is, but hopefully he'll be back soon. We read here in Romans 1.16, if we could go there. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel, but it's the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jews and then the Gentiles. So the Lord laid it on my heart about three years ago. He's like, all right, Jose, we're sharing Jesus with the Gentiles. The Gentiles are non-Jew. But what about the Jews? When is the last time you shared Jesus with the Jews? So we're going to have an opportunity to literally share Jesus with the Jews in Israel. So think about it. If you want to go on this trip, that door is open for you. It's going to be an awesome time. I think you're going to have to get uh, vaccinated before you go to Israel. Because right now uh, in Israel, they're making it mandatory to get vaccinated. And they're not allowing any foreigners into the country yet. But I talked to the head missionary in Israel. He believes that door is going to be opening soon for us to go to Israel to share Jesus Christ with the Jews. See, we are all called on a mission, whether it's overseas missions or local missions. We're all called to share Jesus with somebody. Start with your family. Start with your co-workers. Start with your neighbors. Well, Sherry just got done sharing Jesus with our, our, our neighbor, and she's now watching online. She's watching Hope City Church online. Hi, neighbor. <laughs> so I want, I want you guys to know, we're called to share Jesus with somebody. You know, because one day somebody shared Jesus with you. You wouldn't be at church today if somebody didn't share Jesus with you. So we read in 1 Corinthians 1, 23. We preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to the Jews and foolishness to the Gentiles. So when you share Jesus, when you communicate the good news, sometimes people are going to think you're a fool. Can you handle that? They're going to like, uh, you don't know what you're talking about. So you sharing Jesus with people might make people stumble. Like, what you talking about, Willis? What you talking about? They they might not get it. What Jesus died on the cross for my sins? He rose on the third day. I don't get it. You, you know what that means? You got to pray more for that person. The God of this world, lowercase G, has blinded the unbelievers, so they can't see the glory of God. So let's pray for our neighbors. And for this world that God would take those spiritual blinders away so they can see the truth that Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world.